Welcome back, fellow Night Owls. This is Dr. Nighttime, and I'm continuing with this series of going through the six written answer questions from the most recent LTAM exam. That was fall of 2020. And now we're on to question three. This question isn't hard. It's just really easy to overthink it. Uh, so it's a standard Kaplan-Meier question. It says, you're using the following data extracts of a mortality study of 30 lives, each age 75 at the start of the study, to estimate the survival function S of T equals P75T. Okay. Part A is show Kaplan-Meier estimate for S of 5, that is the probability that this 75-year-old lives another 5 years, is 0.86 to the nearest 0.01. You should calculate the, present, uh, the value to the nearest 0.001. All right. So, we just look, we, we know we started with 30, at one and a half years in, one person died, one left the study. So we know that the one who left the study was going to live at least that one and a half years. So that means we multiply uh, 29 divided by 30, uh, we take 29 uh, over 30 to get the uh, estimate of the probability of surviving to age one and a half, or one and a half years after the start. Then the next uh, line is three years in, one person died exactly uh, three years in, nobody left the study. So there had been 28 people left uh, a year and a half in, so you do 27 over 28, right? 27 survivors over 28 total. And then with those 27 survivors, you now uh, at 4.2 years in, two people die at that exact age and two people leave the study at that exact moment as well. Uh, so you've got 29 over 30 times 27 over 28 times 25 over 27 equals 0 0.86310. I, I did one more decimal point than that, or two more decimal points than I needed to, but okay. That's actually also the answer to S of 5. Right? It's not only the answer to S of 4.2, but also the answer to S of 5. Now, why can we do that? Well, intuitively, you would say, all right, now I know that's how many people survive up through 4.2 years. I know that this time around, nobody died in between 4.2 and 5 years, but it's possible that somebody could have. And you might be tempted to use an O guide or some other uh, interpolation mechanic uh, to get the value between 4.2 and uh, 8.9. When I said that this is really easy to overthink, that's exactly the sort of overthinking that I was trying to warn against. There's no need to interpolate between 4.2 and 8.9. Another way of viewing it is, well, our best estimates are based on what happened this time around. This time around, these four people died in those five years. If nobody ever left the study, we'd say, all right, look, we started with 30 people, four of them died, we'd say 26 over 30. The only reason why we don't even do that is because we have to worry about the exact timing of when people left the study, so that we have to say, all right, so we know that they survived up till this point, and we stop measuring them after that. So, so we just do this. Uh, according to our estimate, you get perfect survival between 4.2 and 5. Uh, yeah, there's going to be some randomness in there. Later parts of the question address that randomness. All right, 
Next part of the problem, Kathy, age 75, purchases a single premium $100,000 five-year pure endowment policy. You're given the following information. Premiums and reserves are calculated using the estimated survival functions from part A, and there's a 6% interest rate. Next part of the question just says calculate the net single premium for the pure endowment product. So the endowment function is just probability of surviving those five years uh, once we account for five years of interest or five years of discount. So you just take the 0 0.86310 times 1.06 to the negative five for the five years. You get 0.64496 given $100,000 of this endowment. Uh, it ends up being $64,496. Not too hard. Then for part C, calculate the net premium reserve at time two for this policy. So premium reserves are calculated assuming the policy is still in force. That would mean that Kathy is still alive two years in. Uh, since you're evaluating it two years in, if she survives the remaining three years, then it's only going to have three years of discount, right? Because you're, you're measuring it at the time that you're reevaluating now and, and calculating the reserve. So even though there's five years of discount from the time of purchase, uh, there's only three years of discount from the time of evaluation. Okay, so probability of a 77-year-old living to age 80 uh, is the same as probability of a 75-year-old living to age 80 divided by the probability of a 75-year-old living to age 77. So we already calculated that first that numerator as 0.86310. That denominator, that's just going to be 29 over 30, because if you look back at our first table, uh, we had that over the first two years, we started with 30 people, and we had one death. Yeah, so then we just plug those numbers in. Right? The 100,000 times 0 0.86310 divided by 29 over 30, with three years of discount, gets us 74,966. All right. Next part, using Greenwood's formula, show that the approximate standard deviation of the Kaplan-Meier estimate of S5 is 0.064 to the nearest 0.001. You should calculate the value to the nearest 0.0001. All right. So I have the derivation or an outline of derivation of Greenwood's formula here in gray. You wouldn't need to show all this gray stuff uh, on the exam itself, but I would like to walk through it at least briefly, to, uh, just so that it, it, the green formula doesn't appear to be completely made up. Uh, so the trick here is that what we're looking for is variance of the product of the survival probabilities, right? Uh, surviving five years can be viewed as, well, you have to survive the first year, and then after that first year, you have to survive the second year, etc., etc. Instead, rather than going year by year, we go based on whichever values there are on the table. So there were values at 1.5, 3.0, and 4.2. Those are the ones we're interested in. So we want variance of a product of independent uh, quantities. We don't have a convenient formula for that, but we do have a convenient formula for variance of the sum of independent quantities. And the way to, uh, uh, the way to translate between those is to use a natural log, right? We take natural log of the product, and that gets us the sum of natural logs. Uh, using the delta method, we find that variance of natural log of something equals one over that thing squared times the variance of the original. All right. So, so you get that one over survival probability that we're looking for squared times the variance of what we're looking for equals uh, this sum of variances of natural logs. You use delta method again, you get that 1 over p1 squared times variance of p1 plus 1 over p2 squared variance of p2 plus 1 over p3 squared variance of p3, etc., etc., uh, equals this quantity up here. Then for variance of a given probability, we use the fact that variance of, well, well, so we use the fact that what we have thus far, the way we're measuring these probabilities is just looking at individuals and saying, did you survive or not? That's a binomial random variable, and we use the formula for uh, the probability associated with a binomial random variable, so that's going to be 
P times Q over N, right? If we were looking for the count, it would be P times Q times N. Looking for the probability, it's P times Q divided by N. Uh, simplify down, we get that this each little component of the variance is the appropriate Q divided by N times the appropriate P, all summed up. Algebra happens and we get that it ends up being uh, the sum of number of deaths in uh, each little mini time period times number at risk, it's, uh, divided by number at risk times uh, number of survival. Uh, we crunch that out here. We get that the variance of S5 equals 0.004049. Square root of that is our standard deviation, 0.06363. Uh, pretty much this is all you'd need to show, maybe copy-pasting the generic formula for Greenwood's uh, approximation uh, that can be found directly in the LTAM tables. But again, I feel like I, as the educator, have a responsibility to at least give some hints about where this comes from. Uh, so that you'll actually believe me when I say that this is uh, what the formula is. Now, again, there's the question of, well, what do we do about the difference between 4.2 years in and 5 years in? We don't worry about that. Uh, according to our, our raw data right here, we had no observed deaths in that period. With no observed deaths, we associate the death probability over that uh, 0.8 year period as zero. Under that assumption, there's no variance. Uh, yes, it feels kind of silly, but it is just an approximation anyway. And finally, the last part, uh, calculate the 95% linear confidence interval for S5. This is something that should be basic to you, uh, assuming you took exam P. Uh, linear confidence interval is just going to be mean plus critical Z value times sigma. You probably have committed to memory that for 95% confidence interval, Z critical is 1.96. So mean is 0 0.86310. Standard deviation calculated to be 0 0.06363. We do mean plus 1.96 times standard deviation, or plus or minus 1.96 times standard deviation. Uh, we get that 95% confidence interval is 0 0.7384 to 0.9878. And then assuming a single premium of 65,500 net of commission with no other expenses, now calculate the 95% confidence interval for the expected loss at issue. So that it, loss at issue is money going out minus money coming in. Uh, money coming in is known. Remember, it's at issue, so we don't need to discount the single net premium. We do need to discount the, uh, the payment, but okay. So... It's a payment of $100,000 uh, multiplied by uh, 1.06 to uh, times 10 to the negative 5 for the five years of discount. Uh, multiply that by the probability of survival, which is anywhere between 0.7384 and 0.9878. You crunch all those numbers. Uh, the, the survival benefit here is considered a positive loss. The premium that you actually collect is considered a negative loss because you're gaining it. So you end up with uh, negative 10,322 to 8,314. Notice, by the way, this is not a 95% confidence interval for the loss at issue. The loss at issue is either going to be 65,500 minus... 100,000 discounted five years, right? Or, or sorry, I guess other way around. It's uh, benefit minus premium, right? Or just negative premium with no benefit. It's going to be one of those two. Uh, and it's going to be each one with greater, uh, with probability greater than 5%. So that entire, uh, both possibilities together would combine to make the entire 95% confidence interval. They'd also make the entire 100% confidence interval. Uh, but that is not what it's asking. It's asking 95% confidence interval for the expected loss at issue. Uh, and while the question didn't ask this, uh, this means I would say, given that you're uh, more than 5% likely to expect to lose money on this, 
That means, given your limited data, you probably shouldn't offer too many of these policies altogether, because uh, it's entirely possible that you would be expecting to lose money on those policies, um, which is not a risk that an insurance company should be taking all that often. Uh, all right, so hopefully you found this a little helpful. Uh, description of why we don't worry about interpolation, right? Because yes, in theory, you would have to worry about, well, what happened later and shouldn't the data normally be smoother than that? It's just an approximation. We don't worry about that using these techniques. Uh, sure, there's fancier stuff you could use. We don't. And as always, uh, if you like my way of explaining things and want to arrange a private uh, session, click the link in the description. And until next time, this is Dr. Nighttime wishing you a good night.